Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a man named Tony from Denver, Colorado, who was approached by a woman named Patricia through text messages. The two engaged in a conversation about a paid companionship. Tony started to have doubts about trusting Patricia and the company she worked for after sending thousands of dollars to meet her. This story will be completely different from any other episode we've released, so make sure you watch till the end. Let's get into it. Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. My name is Tony. I work in the restaurant industry as a cook. I enjoy riding motorcycles. Some of my hobbies include rebuilding small engines. I started online dating after a mutual separation between my last girlfriend and she moved out of town had a void that i wanted to fill i joined a couple websites tony signed up for a bunch of different dating sites but he wasn't having much luck he was contacted by a woman named patricia through a random text message not through the dating site i met patricia fernandez her correspondence replying to me on my text message she was telling me that she was 23 years old i had her birthday, made some plans to meet, went to go meet her locally. She was attractive. She looked like she was average size, I don't know, five, four, nice figure, pretty smile, happy-go-lucky, very inviting, very enticing. But right away, it was, I love you, I love you. And I that was a little uneasy, unsettling. For me, it takes two or three dates before I start even having feelings or making advancement. Growing up, there were too many cheerleaders and other girls that just wanted to screw me because of who I was or because of my popularity or my um, achievements. I wanted more. I wanted to do whatever I could to make this work. Tony was contacted by Patricia's manager. Her name was Mary Grace. He told us that he didn't get any pictures of Mary Grace, so we just used these stock videos and photos to represent her. We felt that if she was real, she'd probably look something like this. Anyways, she told Tony if he wanted to continue to speak with Patricia, he was going to have to pay. A manager had started corresponding to me, and it seemed like it was a dating service. I didn't want to subscribe or pay membership to it, but I ended up paying money for this dating service. Tony wanted to keep his relationship alive with Patricia, so he paid for the membership and they continued to chat. This is a private modeling company and the boss lives here in the same state and that there's a manager that travels and it seemed like it was some sort of infrastructure business. There was a certain quota that, that Patricia had and that that was the driving force. The connection between Tony and Patricia started to become stronger. Tony really enjoyed speaking to her every day. I felt like with the time and the emotions that I was falling in love with her, that we were amorous and we were talking to each other, confiding in each other. The next day, Tony received a text message from Mary Grace. She told him that he needed to spend more money to continue to speak to Patricia. There was a title of the dating card, and that was a couple hundred dollars. They would say, I, I'm going to make sure that you're not some killer or a psycho. And I said, believe me, I'm not. I paid for that, and I never received it. And I would make reference to it that, where's my ID? Where's, where's this clearance? Where's the established payment? Every time Tony would pay a fee, it just seemed like Mary Grace would come up with something else he needed to pay for to continue to talk to Patricia. They kept changing the fee, they kept changing the amounts, and then they said we have to get some sort of uh, authorization fee. And I didn't want to back out and lose my money. My intentions were just to get to know her. I wanted to at least make contact and say hello and see if the person's real. Tony kept chatting with Patricia, but at the same time, he started to get in contact with other models that were working for the same company. All of the girls, including Patricia, needed money from Tony. Females cost money, and no matter what you do, if you're taking them out to dinner, that amount is actually paying for ultimately what guys want. They want to have sex, no matter if it was dinner or a gesture. This is when things flat out just got weird. Mary Grace sent a message to Tony asking if he was willing to purchase Patricia for himself. 
They claim that they would release her from the company and deliver her to Tony. What kind of company is this? Then I started raising my expectation that if they're going to say this, then they better meet that expectation. They promised everything, anything. They were just open-ended, full gamut. Yeah, you could do whatever. I promise. You can meet her. You'll be able to see her. And she's yours. Having relations, sex, you know. Whatever, sure. And they were talking about taking her out of state to Utah. I said that you can't take a confined prisoner or someone who's under restraint or under the supervision of an individual and cross state lines that you have to go through the necessary steps. I didn't know what those were. I was just thinking logically. Her manager was mistreating her, that she was being physically abused, that there was a threat of them taking advantage of her. The guard, he checked my phone or broke my phone or broke the laptop. One time the guard punched her in the stomach and she said, hey, please get me out here because the guys are drinking tonight and I think they're going to be me. And I was like, that's up. I said, I don't even want to talk to you about that. Those guys are up and you got yourself in that situation. I can't help you. It's just the game that they're playing. It's um, They're manipulating, having these open-ended promises of fantasy and there was some sort of schedule. I didn't, I was trying to put the schedule together when they allow her time to wake up when they allow lunch, when they give her um, time to get on the internet, and then at night. At this point, Tony had paid all the fees to get Patricia released from Mary Grace and her boss. Patricia thanked Tony for freeing her, but she was never delivered. Well, I didn't fear that I was doing anything wrong I, because I was trying to help her. I was really trying to help her and get her free. And that time, at that time, she was released. I was relieved, I felt. I'm happy. If I wanted sex, I'd just go to the bar, find some drunk girls, and wouldn't have to pay for sex. It was I was trying to help her out and pay her quota. My intentions with Patricia moving forward are to get my refund. There was that was the promise that whatever I paid now placed on a card, a money card. My real hope is was that I would get that money back because after I started adding it up, I realized that. I was like, holy shit, that was a lot of money. Tony's story was very concerning. We had to figure out if Patricia was real. We wanted to make sure that she was safe. Thankfully, after running a reverse image search, we were able to identify the real person in the photos within minutes. And you can do the same. If you're looking to find the identity of your online lover, you can start with the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com. You can click this YouTube card or click the link in our bio. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. This thing was all farce. Everything was fake. We then looked into all the text messages and emails that Tony sent to us. This is when things took an even darker turn. Our team was able to put together a timeline of everything and the messages we read will shock you. Make sure you watch the full video to find out what we learned. It was time to sit down with Tony for the first time. I have some questions when we were going through like the pre-interview and then a lot of the information you sent, you had sent a lot of correspondence back and forth. You had referenced a lot of your high school days and that's impacted your mindset now. Can you help us understand like what happened during that time frame and, and why, uh, why that's something that you brought up quite a bit? So I don't know, I, I don't even remember some of the questions. So you had mentioned um, like your high school days and how women wanted to be with you all the time. So I, that's what I, I was referring to. Not all the time. I mean, I was, I was successful as an athlete and some of the cheerleaders we hung out with, you know, they were, we were all single. I think from what I understand, you had gotten a random text message from somebody you didn't know, right? Right. And then, uh, started having conversation back and forth with that person. Did you guys start exchanging pictures? What what happened during those conversations? So it, initially it was just uh, correspondence. It was secondary to me wanting a date. So I made application or paid membership to a dating service. And then I noticed that the pattern was the girls were going out of the app and utilizing my information and texting me secondary to that. I just, it was, I was... I was learning as I was going because it seemed like the norm was a female had a manager, male or female, 
it is seemed like it was in order that it was the normal and so I was being handed off uh, between the female and then the manager and the manager was the one that I really didn't appreciate. What was the manager for? To manage the female managerial duties to oversee them regulate or keep in bounds or establish some sort of rapport, I don't know. What were the expectations with talking to her and the manager? What was the expected outcome for you? My expectation was it was a dating site that I was looking for a date, like eHarmony, like any other single guy that was looking for a date. Okay. My father, my father dated and he used the service, I don't know what company, but I hear people using the dating, and I thought, well, what the hell? I'll try it. So nothing at all felt weird or, uh, you know, any of the conversations that you had with the manager, you know, none of that stuff felt weird at all? I could tell that she wasn't educated in the United States because her grammatical sentence and all that, she was misspelling words. And so I was, half the time I was trying to figure out what she was writing, but I can infer what she was saying, and it was just, congruent to what I wanted and um, I noticed that she was overbearing and she would double talk and tell untruth and so I was just like all right have some patience and then before I knew it the amounts were changing and then they couldn't keep their record keeping their records straight I had a certain number that I was telling and they were just confused and coming up with these different numbers and saying that the number the balance or the number um, the quota, they were using a, okay, whatever the hell a quota is, but it was a, a certain number and that number kept changing and it wasn't per my accounting what it should have been. And so that was just, it was uh, frustrating, but I was at that point more interested in trying to help her with a lot of like the stuff that you had sent us, and these are like emails and text messages that you'd sent back and forth, you were talking about delivery. What, what is that? Like, what, like, were you expecting the manager to deliver her to your house or? That was the term that they were using. You were paying for a date? What, what were you paying for? A quota to get her released. I, there was a card an ID, an authorization, a verification, a security check, and then there was a uh, gas. They were charging for gas for the, and payment of the guard, and it was just really frustrating, a bunch of bullshit. But so as things were progressing, um, she had messaged you, said, "Hey, read my plan, babe." Uh, then he slapped me in my face and punched me in my tummy. He said, "When I tried to run away, he will." me he's going to me and then your response was well what did you learn with that action what did you mean by that response i don't know that i don't remember the context of it well i just read the context of it well i think it was i don't think it's all inclusive because if i was following it if i was making reference to a lesson or to learn something then it would have been well stated that there's a lot of um clustered words there I I can't decipher it I'd have to look at it in order to interpret or give a sound explanation of what I had said to her because there was a time where I told her you know you can't trust them document it figure out their names the whole time that you were speaking to Patricia did you know that you know there was going to be a business deal with her being sold to you she wouldn't tell me the specifics of why she was being held captive against her will. And so she said that she knew she knew the business and what was going on, but she couldn't say it because she was fearful that they would harm her. Keep in mind, guys, at this point, he knew she was being held captive. He knew she was being abused, yet he never contacted the police. At what point did you feel like, you know, maybe I should call the police or maybe I should help this girl out. Maybe I should get her some real help. Even if you didn't believe it, you, I mean, you obviously did believe it because you sent money to her, right? To speak to her. So you believe that she was real. What, at what moment, you know, did you stop and think, 
maybe I should call the police and help her out. Well, I thought that all the time, but calling the police, you need proof, you need evidence, or you need factual basis. And all I had was a number or a voice with no location, no true identity, no company. Um, these people were not even in the same location because when I was asking who's there or what's the surrounding. She was pretty clear with you and was upfront about her situation with this company. Like we're looking at text messages. L literally her exact words were, I joined this company because I thought I would just sell PDP ID cards. I don't know what that means. They never told me that included having sex and meeting people. They only told me this when I signed the contract. So in April, like she told you that and you had sent all this money I mean, after that, so you knew like the situation, you sent all this money um, after that. Like, I'm just be candid, like morally, yeah. I have a problem with this. You guys are, I asked for help. And if this is the help that you guys are coming forth with, then um Tony signed up for meetme.com, an app that we found that's commonly used to solicit sex online. Apple is even considering to remove this app from the App Store. He met Patricia Brown Fernandez January 2022. By February 1st, Tony had learned that Patricia was being held against her will, needed to meet a quota, was being physically abused in a facility kept by guards, but did not contact the police. By February 23rd, Tony had agreed to send money for the delivery of Patricia to his door. He sent a total of $1,500. By March 3rd, Tony found out that Patricia was not going to be delivered. He contacted us two days later. That's March 5th. On April 3rd, Tony requested the delivery again for Patricia. I think... I think at this point, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Like, I, hey, so I just want to be clear. I don't feel good about this. Right. I didn't feel good about her being held, so I wanted to give her the money, and then I told her, get out and go. And that's what she did. She got, got out, and she took off. And I told her, yeah, I could show you the emails, and she, she said, thank you. And I said, you're going to do what you're going to do. Just get, get away from her. You don't just... Do what you have to do. Get away from him. She was saying um, she would be my maid, my slave. I was like, I can't be responsible for that. I have my own family. I can't be bringing a stranger into my house. I was more interested in getting her away from the abuse, the assault, the threats. And um, as her being a witness or being the person that was impacted, that she would have enough authority because I can't call the police and say she was hurt. The police will tell me that, you know, that I have no right to do that. So I was trying to think of the best case scenario. She needs to get out and then she could report. And she said that in these emails that she'll claim, um, make a claim against them and get money. I was like, okay, fine. The main thing was getting her out, getting her out of that confined guard with, who had a, a gun with the manager who was um, taking and stealing the money. There was a part in the, in, the, in the video that we saw, your expectations were what they promised you, which was seeing her, meeting her, and effing that S out of her. You don't, you don't remember saying that? Well, you I don't remember saying you. anything to her. On May 5th, you had screenshotted an email, basically, like, I'm not even going to read it. Like, it's just very disrespectful and, like, pretty, yeah. So here's what, okay, so here, Tony, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to do anything. Yeah. We, we've done 300 videos. I don't feel good about this. I don't feel good about you. And we're going to end this and, uh, and just leave it there, okay? That's your decision. Yep. All right, thank you. Bye. Like, we've dealt with so many people. Yeah. I've never, like, not cared that anybody gets scammed. And I don't give an F that this guy got scammed. Yeah. Like, we're not helping him out. We're not doing anything. I think we'll just recap and 
teach people how to protect themselves and, and I, I don't know what we'll do with the, this video, but imagine if this was real though, David, See, imagine what, if this whole thing was, yeah. he sent money. He thinks it's real. So like you're reading his messages as somebody who thinks this is real. And then he's like talking in circles and saying he doesn't remember. And then like, like I'm going through it. And then like what he says. So like, honestly, like he started saying like, Hey, I was trying to help her out. And then I'm pulling up a message after like, He's saying that thinking, okay, maybe he's telling the truth. Yeah. And then I see a message, you know, a month, almost a month later from him saying, you better be here so I can blah, 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 you. And like, I mean, the way like somebody talks like in that dis like disrespectful manner, like he doesn't deserve anything. We didn't feel comfortable giving Tony any information that we found. We were able to find out that the woman in the photos was in no harm. Patricia was a fake person who stole images from two Instagram models, Erin Ashford and Victoria Tanani. In the end, we decided to not help Tony out because we felt that his morals weren't aligned with ours. To be clear, Tony was involved in a scam that is different from a lot of romance scams we see. We believe that if at any moment Tony thought this was real, he should have reported it to the authorities. This is what I think happened. I believe that Tony truly didn't know what was going on. If this was real, Tony would be in a lot of trouble. As romance scams continue to evolve, so do we. With that being said, if you ever come across a situation where someone is being held against their will, the right thing to do is to report it to the authorities. Tony claims that he was trying to help Patricia, but the timelines of the emails and messages back and forth just didn't add up enough to feel like he was worth helping. This created doubt for us. Do you guys think this scammer is just another scammer or a vigilante? Comment down below. We'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish, everyone. Remember, new videos go out every Wednesday. If you or anyone else you know might be going through a scam, please send an email to sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. See you guys next week.